Senators, you've got to write your congressman. That is how we beat Deshaies. It was thousands and thousands of people came forward, and this is what we need to do again. You can't just let it go, because if we do, we lose it. Okay. Thank you for your patience, Dwayne. We have talked too long. What's the bill number? You know, I, I have some bills at the back, and we can, uh, we can get, give them to you. Um, Okay. Well, there are people signing petitions all over the world now. As a matter of fact, National Health Federation is international. We are not just in this country now. We are in Europe now, too. So it is with great pleasure that I introduce a very special young man, a young man that I believe God spared because he had a large job for him to do. When someone is at the brink of death, and um, the Lord saves him, and it can only be God, because none of us are God here. We all know a little bit, but God is certainly the one and the only. Dwayne comes to us from Rochester, New York, but he's a Pennsylvania boy, and he's a Penn State guy, so yay from all the Penn Staters. Uh, Dwayne is by profession an engineer. He worked for Xerox, and in March of 2002, he was in a coma. He was dying. And um, I believe it was divine intervention and a, a couple wonderful ladies. I always say behind every good man is a good woman. And Dwayne did have a couple wonderful ladies behind him. His precious mother, Minnie, his daughter, um, and she's here this evening. Uh, Cynthia, would you like to stand? I'd like everybody to see the pretty daughter that Dwayne has. This is Cynthia. She's from our Pittsburgh area. Welcome, Cynthia. And your sister's name? Margo. Margo. Okay, and he also has a sister, Margo. Margo could not be with us this evening. But these three ladies, and with the hand of God, this is why Dwayne is here this evening. Dwayne had a blood sugar level of 1,337, so far off the chart that you can't even see it. Uh, he also had um, severe hypoglycemia. He had two blood clots. He was struggling with pneumonia high cholesterol, and he was taking four insulin shots a day. That sounds like somebody's in some real trouble. And because of his uh, engineering and biochemistry background, Dwayne was able to figure some real good figures out. And slowly, and through, I'm sure, trial and error, he was able to come up with some formulation to figure out how to help himself. He also lost 30 pounds, and he has learned the secret Learned it so well that now the medical doctors, when they have severe cases, they come and see him. And that's really saying something because that's a real step down to a medical doctor. So he has much, much to tell. And um, I thanks, Barbara. I apologize. Before uh, I bring Duane to the podium, I would just like to ask a blessing on Duane and on each and every person here. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be together. We thank you for bringing Dwayne here. We know that the message he has will be powerful. It will impact the lives of each and every person here. They will either use it for themselves or take it out to someone that they know and love and care about. We ask that you bless each and every person here. Bless Dwayne. We pray traveling mercies for each and every one here. And we just thank you. We ask that you help us to continue to uh, be together, bring forth wonderful speakers that will impact each and every one of us. And we thank you for this opportunity, and we give you, Lord, all the praise and all the honor and all the glory for all things. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you. And I just thank you, Dwayne, for coming. It is sincere pleasure that we bring you to the podium, and we welcome you. Pittsburgh welcomes you. And I will add, uh, Dr. McCor uh, Dr. Courtney had Dwayne on his radio program this Monday. I'm sure many of you heard him. He was so deeply impressed with him that he has actually made a slot for Dwayne to come back, and he will be here on Saturday, May the 5th, 
at Dr. Courtney's conference out at the Holiday Inn at the airport. So we'll see him then too. So if anybody missed here, please invite them to come then. Thank you. Dwayne, we welcome you. Dwayne, do you want to use the microphone? Or is that turned on? Is it on? Can you hear me? No. No, you can't? No. no I didn't. It's not working. It's, it says it's just. Hello? That, that's all right. That was all right. Oh, that's all right? Yeah. We have to. Ah. <laughs> testing, testing. Sorry, that. Oh, I'm sorry about this. Go ahead. If somebody in the sound engineer were sure, could you? <laughs> Diabetes, you're not a doctor. You're just an engineer. And um, I tell them there's three reasons. Number one is God. Number two is my mother. And number three is my daughter. Now, I don't know too many daughters who can admit I saved my father's life. But I must also admit that I believe that Cynthia enjoyed torturing me <laughs> when I was in the hospital. In March of 2002, I, uh, I awoke that morning, it was March the 16th, I was preparing a presentation for one of my managers at Xerox. But when I awoke, I found I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't move. Um, you know the, the feeling you get when you fall asleep on your arm, you get that rubbery feeling? Well, I had this rubbery feeling over my entire body. And I thought, <laughs> this isn't good. And I thought, okay, maybe I slept wrong, I'll just go back to sleep. But this voice said, no, I don't think you should go back to sleep. And I said, well, yeah, but I don't feel too good, and I really don't want to go to work at this time. I'll go in later in the morning. The voice said, no, if you go back to sleep, you will be dead. Now, there's another voice that said, oh, but if you call an ambulance, and it turns out that it's just an upset stomach or a pinched nerve, won't that be embarrassing? Uh, but the other voice said, yeah, but if I'm right, he'll be dead. I decided to listen to the first voice and called 911. And since I, I live alone, they had to break down the door and uh, take me to the hospital. The next thing I remember was coming out of the coma and, uh, and uh, uh, my daughter was there, and I'm thinking, okay, am I, am I dead? Because she's in Pittsburgh, and it was a snowstorm. So I knew she couldn't have gotten there that quickly. And uh, I, I don't know what she was saying, and I don't know what I said. <laughs> um, because if you've ever been in a, anyone here, you ever been in a coma? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's not fun because when you come out of a coma, first of all, you don't realize you were in a coma. And I remember trying to speak. And I remember Cynthia saying, saying something and I don't know if she was crying or whatever. And the doctors were shaking their heads and I'm trying to speak. But nothing was coming out of my mouth. But I could hear them speaking but they couldn't hear me speaking. So I thought, I must be dead. And I thought, oh, this is kind of cool. This is death. I can hear them and they can't hear me. Of course, I found out later that because my blood glucose level was so high, it causes the vocal cords to dehydrate, to become very dry. They don't vibrate. And therefore, even though I was moving my mouth, no sound was coming out. But they fed me fluids, and within a couple hours, my voice 